You are listening to G-Pods by Gaurav Aswani. And your video starts in 3, 2, 1. Hi friends, a warm good evening. This is Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillay here once again with the session on 14 days, 14 books of Chanakya. Yes friends, this is uh, our 8th session and today we are going to be covering the 8th book of Chanakya. But before we start, let me all wish you a happy Hanuman Jayanti. Yes, my dear friends, today is a very special day. Today we have Hanumanji's birthday. So today is a very special day when uh, we are actually going to remember one of the ideal leaders at the same time an ideal devotee. Because we have a leader like Rama and we have a devotee like Hanuman. There are so many qualities that we can learn from uh, Hanumanji. And today, uh, not just looking at him as uh, uh, a godly figure, but let us also look at Hanumanji from whom we can learn a lot uh, and how to achieve our purpose uh, and goals in life. And there's a very famous saying of Hanumanji, as long as I fulfill my mission, Ram Kaj, I will not take rest. So the best way to achieve anything is to follow Hanumanji. Even though he was very, very strong, had many Siddhis. Siddhis, Siddhis are basically the kind of a, a supernatural powers that you have. He could become big, he could become small, he could fly, all those things. Yet he never got into ego. He always believed that, you know, I have to be a humble servant. So we have to be sevaks and we have to serve the society. This is what we learn from Hanumanji. So thinking about Hanumanji, let us all start today's particular session. And before we start, we will start with a prayer. And this prayer we've been always doing, that is about the two great teachers that Chanakya invo invokes, Shukracharya and Brahaspati. So today, along with Hanumanji, let us also invoke the two great teachers before we start. Om Namaha Shukra Brahaspati Bhyam. Om Namaha Shukra Brahaspati Bhyam. Salutations to Shukracharya and salutations to Brahaspati, the two great teachers who actually taught Chanakya the art of thinking, the art of strategy. They were great gurus of strategy. Let us all remember our great teachers and we will start our session. So friends, till now, we are almost halfway through uh, 14 days uh, and we are already done seven books till now. I hope all of you remember those seven books. If not, please go and watch the previous recordings of all the videos. And we started on 1st of April and today is 8th of April. So the best way to remember every particular uh, uh, book number is actually to remember the date itself. So 1st of April, first book. 2nd of April, 2nd book. So today is 8th of April. So we have the 8th book. And uh, I'm glad to tell you that yesterday we started with the quiz. And what was very interesting is that we were surprised by the kind of number of responses that we got. So a lot of people have responded with the answers. Remember the three questions. I'll repeat them later on. Uh, who, uh, what are the three names of Chanakya? Which university did he study? And of course, which are the two books that he wrote? So we are going to continue that with another quiz today. And remember, overall, we are going to have a winner who will be personally called and we'll be gifting uh, him or her a personalized autograph copy of one of these Chanakya books. So friends, uh, thank you once again for your active participation. It has not been one way, it has been two way. And there's been a lot of learnings for us. And the good part is that we are also seeing people from different parts of the world in different time zones coming and attending this particular program. This cannot be successful without each one of you being so actively participating. For the seven days you have been active and we expect that for the next seven days also you will be interactive. So today is the eighth day and uh, we are going to cover this book and of course we will be having the Q&A, question and answer. Again, that's a huge number of questions coming up. We'll try and answer maximum of them today also. So with that friends, today we come to a very unique book of Chanakya. Among all the books, this stands out. So the name of the book is Inside Chanakya's Mind, Anvikshiki and the Art of Thinking. Okay, the name of the book is Inside Chanakya's Mind, Anvikshiki and the Art of Thinking. It's a very different book and of course what makes me very happy is that when I read this, uh, it's written over here from India's number one business writer. 
so this is something that made me india's number one business writer because so many books had happened by this particular time but the numbers only grew with time thanks to each one of you uh, so i'm going to talk about the background of the book and of course we are going to do a book reading this book has been published by a uh, very different publishing house so till now we saw jayco and we saw rupa but this is published by random penguin book house now just to give you an idea random penguin book house penguin random book house is actually uh, the world's number one publication they also have an india office and i've been working with them with many other books also we will be covering up some other books later on but this particular book was the first book with them because it talks about one particular thing which everybody is curious about and that particular subject is covered in this book in detail and that is called anvik shiki i'm sure many of you may also have not heard about it or even if you have heard about it it is for the first time that you must have heard about it and this is what defines chanakya we are going to see that in detail today what this book is all about and what anvik shiki is all about as we know the title of the book tells about it that it is the art of thinking okay it is a science of thinking but there are many meanings to it and we will see that in detail so friends uh, let's start with what we always do look at the book cover very unique book cover okay this also says that radha krishnan pillai is a winner of the raymond crossword book award raymond crossword book award you remember which book it was as uh, so for all those people who have been attending regularly they'll be easy to recollect which book actually got me the crossword raymond crossword book of the year award so just go back and recollect that so as we do this every time it's a very beautifully designed it's got a very rustic feel Uh, and this rustic thing you can see here it's got uh, you know the kind of a mark that you put in your head it's almost like a shivji's uh, three is uh, so it's it's got a very unique feel to it it is as if applying bhasma on our head you know it's like a tilak as they say but let me just read out for all of you what it says the de definitive new book from the best selling author of corporate chanakya yeah so all, as all of you know for me the first book was corporate chanakya so that legacy continues chanakya uh, was one of the best strategic thinkers of the world chanakya was one of the best strategic thinkers of the world uh, in the 4th century bc he wrote the arthashastra he wrote the arthashastra and unrevealed political theories that has since been used by leaders across the globe in inside chanakya's mind radha krishnan pillai uses the practical and innovative approach he is known for to distill for the masses inside chanakya's mind the old age wisdom of how to think yes that's very important chanakya teaches us how to think and that's what the book is all about chanakya and arthashastra and very unique knowledge about how to think So friends, this is a book uh, for those people. Let's see this once again. Inside Chanakya's mind, Anvik Shikhi and the Art of Thinking by Radha Krishnan Pillai. So this is the first page when you open this particular book. This book was uh, published by Penguin, uh, Penguin Random Book House, and you can get all the details. It was published in two thousand seventeen, almost three years from now, and. now comes the special part of what this book the dedication of course completely dedicated to my family but there is something special when i read out the dedication whom is this book dedicated to to my children yeah it is dedicated to my children anvik shiki and arjun who are curious and always in wonderment the children are always curious to learn and they are always in wonderment so the first people whom i see in my house who are very curious to learn is anvik shiki and arjun so does it sound a bell yeah anvik shiki actually is the name of my daughter yes i have named her many people were surprised ye kya naam rakha hai aapne what kind of a name have you kept but you know it comes as a name of draupadi in the mahabharat and i was very surprised when i went into the knowledge and I just named her anvik shiki a very unique name but also the son arjun they have a difference of 2 years my daughter is 10 years old and my son is 8 years old but what happens is that the curiosity level has encouraged me that i want to be a child again remember the two words being childish and being a child 
So you have to be childlike, not childish. You know, a lot of people grow, but they are childish, and that is stupidity. But childlike is the ability of being curious, wanting to know more. Wanting to learn more, children always want something new, 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 new. That's the curious part of them. So it is very important to actually make sure that all of us have the curiosity in us, which children have. And of course, to my wife Sureka, who forces me to think differently as a husband, friend, and partner in solving life's problem. See, it is said that your spouse is always like your best friend. Now the thing is that. Together, when we brainstorm, we get better ideas. Hmm? So it's to my family, to my children, to my wife, to my parents. So that is a dedication of this particular book. So let me read it out. There are totally ten particular chapters in this particular book. There are ten chapters, and these chapters are: first is introduction to Chanakya, introduction to Chanakya. Second is types of thinking. So you know, it is not just about thinking; it is about types of thinking. the different models of thinking you know there is something called as mental models so if you actually get it into your head you can use it any time so it's like filling up your petrol you know and whenever you want you can ignite it and run the car so there are models of thinking then there is the seven dimensions of thinking okay friends there is called as seven dimensions of thinking and the fifth chapter is the eighth dimension of thinking the eighth dimension of thinking which means that uh, apart from the seven dimension there is an eighth dimension you can see that in the particular book the sixth one is the other side of chanakya many of us know about the the this kind of chanakya the shrewd strategic thinker the person who was in the field of political science that everybody of, of us know about but have you heard about the other side of chanakya that we have explored because thinking is not about thinking straight only it's also another side of thinking okay then the seventh chapter is called chanakya's thoughts on management yes i have been a management teacher i have been a management uh, practitioner consultant trainer whatever you may call it so what are the kind of a chanakya's models of management one is a thinking model and one is a management model that is covered in this particular chapter the eighth one is the duties of a king yeah it king is supposed to be doing duties and what are the kind of duties because leaders have to be thinkers and thinkers become leaders and there is something called as thought leadership chanakya was a rajguru and remember this raja se bhi bada rajguru hota hai so let us remember what are the kind of duties that he teaches to the king so that when we follow it we also will become leaders and kings in our respective fields the ninth one is human and divine thinking this yes, my dear friends there is something called as human thinking and divine thinking because human beings have a limitations when they think but when you connect it to the divine power then your speed of thinking increases you start looking at from a different dimension it's like you know we have a mobile with us but when you connect it to the internet the whole information comes in so you know it's very important to understand we connect to the universe to think better the rishis munis knew that the great thinkers knew that so how do we connect from the human to the divine thinking that is also covered in this particular chapter and the 10th one is inside your mind it's very important to know what is going inside your mind also so we always talk about what is going on in others mind we want to be mind readers so the reality is that we have to be also understanding how our mind functions and finally it ends with acknowledgments whom do i uh, actually acknowledge in this particular book etc etc so that is the content page of the book uh, so there are as you seen the ten chapters and all these particular chapters uh, can be very easily read and understood so before i go into this particular chapter there is something for all my friends who are interested in pursuing their phd's okay now why am i saying a phd thing is basically because i have a lot of my students who are actually studying and doing their masters in leadership science program at the mumbai university uh, at the uh, sanskrit bhavan ramakrishna bajaj sanskrit bhavan we have an institution it's called the chanakya international institute of leadership studies but what is important is that as i told you last time also all the students are from different backgrounds i have a student who is an advocate who is an interior designer and you know who is also some students who have completed the phd's and the previous batch students want to complete their phd's now what is the connection with this particular book in all that i have said is that this book's basic foundation is also based on my phd thesis so when i did my phd under dr shubhada joshi madam 
so i wanted to explore kautilya arthashastra very differently you know so there's a lot of academic side to this particular book which has been explored so my dear friends you know uh, when you are in the field of knowledge when you do research there is something which is called as output of that research and most of the time as you know in the academic world you are supposed to be publishing your research so of course i published it uh, uh, many many of these works but the primary uh, part that comes in this particular book is that it is having a lot of content from my original phd thesis so all of those people who want to know how academic writing is done with a popular style you know, i didn't want to make it very boring only academic or technical so the rough material has been taken from there but also we work with editors and made it very beautiful so that is the reason i want to tell you that anybody who is interested especially in phd should pursue this and my students at the mumbai university also use this particular book we actually teach anvik shikhi as a subject in the course at the masters in leadership science program uh, so just to give an idea this also is like a textbook for many students in many parts of uh, india not only in our university of mumbai so it's a very popular and a different kind of a book from others so what i'm going to do i'm going to read out the first chapter for all of you now uh, introduction to anvik shikhi um, when i heard about anvik shikhi the first time i could not even pronounce it properly over a period of a time now i do training programs you know we do one one month sometimes one one year interventions with lot of our friends you know, saying that how do you apply anvik shikhi but the first thing is to actually understand what is anvik shikhi so let me read out this particular part the introduction part for you so usually you must have seen my style is very simple and it's also about storytelling so this also starts like that chapter number 1 introduction to anvik shikhi let me begin with a story there was once a child whenever he did something wrong others used to tell him why are you making so many mistakes why can't you understand things well can't you think properly when the child went to school he was brought up in an examination system instead of an education system when he did not do well in his exams when he did not do well in his exams his parents and teachers used to say why can't you study properly i hope you can relate to this think about what we tell you otherwise you will not only fail in your exams but also fail in life you not only fail in exam but also you will fail in life as a teenager as a teenager he fell in love and had his heart broken so it was a broken heart that he went through as a teenager his friends told him we had told you not to go after that girl why did you not take our advice hamara suna kyun nahi and this happens with girls also you know they would say no that boy ditched you you should have listened to us he went through a heartbreak when he got out of college and worked in various companies his bosses used to tell him his bosses used to say your effort is important in work but what matters most is the result think about it and you will succeed in your career every time the boss is telling you think 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 when he got married finally he got married and settled in life and he had children and was best bored with the responsibilities of a householder so you know it happens that you get married and marriage is full of responsibilities you get children and full of responsibilities the elders in the house would advise him again the elders would advise so don't think that elders only advise when you are a small child when you become a parent also elders keep advising you and what used to advise him remember they used to say remember and understand your duties so now he has become a parent but the grandparents that is his parents used to tell him remember and understand your duties no one can run away from it it is a part and parcel of your life you know when generally people get married they say oh it's a very nice thing the honeymoon period as this but over a period of a time 
life is all about responsibilities and they say you cannot run away from your responsibilities then came a stage in his life when his children were settled so finally his children were settled they were educated they married and he was close to retirement so that is another phase of life so he is close to retirement his friend asked him have you thought about what to do and what are you going to do post retirement so he was slowly coming to the retirement phase so i asked him have you ever thought what to do after retirement how are you going to spend your time do you have a plan of post retirement he did not finally he was old and alone so everything passed on passed on passed on and is a old person his wife had passed away his wife was gone his children and grandchildren were busy with their own lives and he had nothing much to do so you know there is a saying that at the end of your life and nothing is there you just keep worrying not thinking okay so he was all around and nothing much to do he had all the time in the world to look back and ponder over his life so he is all the time in the world to look back and say what went right what went wrong it is called introspection it is flashback you know thinking about what went right what went wrong all about his life he used to sit down and think and contemplate while reflecting upon every stage of his life right from a child to a teenager to a working person to a married person to a parent to a grandfather so you go through all these phases in your life as a child a student a teenager professional homemaker he was constantly advised he was constantly advised by others to think please think carefully to succeed in life and to avoid making mistakes so everybody is telling you know think properly think properly so you don't make the mistakes and you succeed in life he hadn't he hadn't really got a chance to do an in depth an in depth reflection on the word think at all so everybody should tell him to think he never understood what is the word thought thinking now for the first time in his life he was thinking about thinking for the first time in his life he was thinking about thinking okay but was it too late he was wondering you know now i'm in the last part of my life i mean everything is done so what is the point in thinking is it too late to think about thinking does the story think and make you think or was it too late all his life he had been told by others but no one actually taught him how to think everybody was telling him think 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 but nobody trained him in how to think so friends does this story tell you something does it ring a bell inside your mind inside your head do you think this story has a connection in your life if you really think okay friends if you really think you will understand that this is a story about all of us so don't think it's the story of somebody else ye apni kahani hai ye har ghar ki kahani hai har vyakti ki kahani hai we have this ghar ghar ki kahani no so ye hai har vyakti ki kahani it is the story of every individual and you can relate it this is a story of every man and woman every child every teenager every professional the young and the old the married and the unmarried so if you look at it all these stages we all go through at some point or other and we actually come across the word called thinking but nobody has trained us in thinking this is the story of you and me strange but true strange but true one can lead one's whole life without thinking now that is the interesting part even if you don't think it is okay you can still lead a life so the beauty is that you can still live your whole life without thinking now let us reverse the story okay now this is a normal story but let's look at a reverse story imagine if you were taught how to think from the very beginning Okay, imagine if you are taught how to think right from the beginning, and the moment your thinking 
faculties develop and imagine right from the beginning your thinking faculties is trained and it starts developing instead of loading the child with information instead of loading the child with information if one taught the child the right methods of thinking analysis decision making prioritizing planning structuring sequencing critical evaluation logic things would be totally different okay so imagine you're training the child with all these aspects you will be a totally different person you would question when questions are required you won't just say questions for the sake of question but you will ask the right questions at the right time accept others views when it is necessary so it's not about your thinking you also accept the views of others think through all the consequences think through all the consequences take calculated risk you will take calculated risk in your life and without doubt and without doubt you will be far 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 more successful you will be far more successful you will be successful you will be successful not only at the very end but also at every stage of your life so don't think that the success will come at the fag end of your career on an old age you should enjoy your success at every stage of your life you should be a successful student you should be a successful person in the family you should be successful in your profession as a parent as a child as a social worker can you be successful everywhere of course you can be that is possible you don't have to be a failure to become a successful person you can have multi dimensions of success but for that you need to know how to think correctly in this book that is inside chanakya's mind we present something very interesting some methods and techniques of thinking oh we are going to present you some techniques of thinking okay the philosophy of thinking and alternative ways of thinking so there is a way of philosophical thinking there is an alternative way of thinking so there is a method and methodology of thinking which is covered in this particular book this book is simple yet profound okay this book is simple yet profound as i told you friends this is actually an output of my so many years of research and i actually got a phd on a topic which has actually come into this particular book and i have been fortunate thanks to my guide dr shubha joshi madam and all the teachers in the department of philosophy at the university of mumbai and of course i will never forget chimna mission from where i started learning the artha shastra so don't just look at it as a book is a very uh, much kind of an output of years of research that has come into this particular book this book is simple yet profound it will lead you to something that will ignite your mind and intelligence okay it will ignite your mind and intellect so it is not just about motivation okay i definitely write motivation book inspiration book but this will actually trigger your intellect it will require a lot of brain cells of yours to be active you will have to think and activate your thinking cells for this so it requires a little bit of a different intellectual energy to be able to talk about physical energy mental energy but here you require intellectual energy so that's where the objective is about thinking and let me tell you my dear friends thinking is not an easy job it requires a lot of energy so you must have seen this in your life when you study a lot when you are applying your mind you get stressed out you feel hungry because your brain cells are getting used so this will use your brains a lot so don't worry it's simple so it's not going to drain out you and one of the things i always told about all my books is that we have kept it simple and you don't have to actually refer to a dictionary or you know unknown word of course there are some you know uh, you know different kind of a word some profound words but at the same time you have kept it as simple so that you can think with clarity in a sure in a sure yet subtle way it will change your thinking in a sure and subtle way it will change your thinking it will add a new dimension to your views about life in general so don't think that it's going to just change your thinking your view about life i have seen a lot of people who complain okay they suddenly start accepting now when you say accepting not just accepting failures you said okay i never knew this part of it you start looking at life very holistically and then somewhere this has happened to me also i have stopped the blame game you know 
lot of people when they are failures they start blaming situations circumstances people but if you really reflect and understand you say okay that's fine your view about life changes if you think correctly you get clairvoyance okay so life in general will change when you one should think correctly i hope the book becomes a silent killer i'll repeat it i hope this book becomes a silent killer you know when we say killer that means it's like a poison yes it's a positive poison it will kill you it will kill your various mis assumptions you had in the past so what is going to kill you not you physically but various assumptions it will kill you and very silently nobody will know you will also not know you said okay i never knew this it will kill your ignorance and make you happier a lot of people are happy with ignorance you know ignorance ignorance is bliss as they say this will kill your ignorance and make you happy if understood from the right perspective if understood from the right perspective it will kill your ego mm, it will kill your ego you may die internally once only to live a full life again you may die once internally to kill your ego actually the real death is not a physical death the real death is a death of the ego so that will die if you know the process of thinking and you will become permanently happy at the highest spiritual level as they say anvikshiki is also a process to find out yourself anviksham and your friends it's inquiry it is logic it is the process of investigation and the first thing is to investigate about i me myself we talk about others but we also should know about ourselves anvikshiki is anviksham we have described everything in detail in this particular book and now ikshiki the ability to go and think deeper and deeper and deeper so you look at it i'm still talking about the whole uh, subject matter let us call this process an adventure in thinking you know we have different adventures to go out for a hike and everything like that but what is this book about it is actually about adventures in thinking so you know sit with yourself and think 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 and on um, there are a lot of people especially in the lockout they don't know what to do they say it's very boring boredom has set in boredom can only set in to the kind of a people who don't know how to think correctly in fact let me tell you very frankly ever since i have been locked down for so many days now like each one of you are sitting at home i never got bored for a minute also because i have been writing books in fact interestingly i completed two books during this lockout period what a what a beautiful time i have been doing a lot of research thinking of course family time so what is important is that i have been doing a lot of webinars and uh, live sessions like this but you know i have never ever felt bored of course in life we should know how to use our mind and intellect carefully this is what anvikshiki will teach you let us begin the journey which actually started centuries ago in india so this journey is about centuries ago we actually taught people how to think and chanakya the master strategist was one of them who taught the right methodology and the right way of thinking so that's anvikshiki for all of you of course then it goes to the chanakya man the how to think about the kautilya's arthashastra the process of writing the arthashastra the purpose of writing the arthashastra why did chanakya write arthashastra then of course the anvikshiki i have explained that in detail with a lot of references of the book now anvikshik in kautilya's arthashastra there is a chapter called as anvikshiki sthapana sthapana means establishing the first chapter prathama vidya is called as anvikshiki and there are many dimensions to it we will see that today also remember the very famous one sama dama danda bheda sama is actually trying to discuss and solve a problem dana is when you look at probably a financial win win situation the problem is not solved danda okay what is danda punishments and bheda you can split it so all these kind of a concepts comes here we have the raja mandala theory that's also explained in the book which is enemies enemy is a friend so these are all concepts that is used for winning in life but all this requires strategic thinking so this book consists detail explanation of each verse so as i told you it, it contains about what is anvikshiki it's uh, basically uh, anvikshiki trai varta danda nitish cheti vidya 
So knowledge is first you have to acquire how to think, then you have to study the Vedas, then you have to study Vartha, economics, and Anvikshiki consists of Sankhya, Yoga, and Lokayata. Sankhya, Yoga, and Lokayata. All these process, uh, of course, it's all there, and uh, you know, it's all there in the university course and in this particular book. I'll not talk about that much because we have limited time. But what I'm going to do is refer to an interesting chapter in the book. It is called Types of Thinking. Okay, the second chapter, I will be just reading out all these names for you because everything is a very detailed process. We, we do this on a regular basis. Uh, for a lengthy program, we do workshops on it. But right now, I will just talk, uh, take you about the types of thinking. So this is all there and each of the thinking has been explained in detail. Okay, so I'll just read out. The first one is called both side thinking. So I think from my side, but I should also know the opponent side. Many people feel that I am the right guy. Stephen Covey, one of the management gurus told that, you know, um, first understand before getting understood. It will solve half of your life's problem. First understand the other person and then understand yourself and expect the other person to understand you. So both side thinking, you have to understand your thinking, you have to uh, think about the opponent side. Because strategy is not about your thinking. It's also about the other person's thinking. So that's first type of thinking. Then the second type of thinking is called alternative thinking. So many times we think there is only one solution to one problem. No, no, no. There are many solutions. There are alternative solutions. There are alternative methods. So how do you think alternative? Backup plans. So in the book I have also written that many times there is one solutions, one solution to many problems. One solution to many problems. And for many problems, one solution. Okay. So there could be many solutions to one problem. So for example, there is fire everywhere. A lot of problems. One solution, call the fire brigade. Okay, and there could be many dimensions of alternative thinking that we can explore. Okay, that we see in this particular type of thinking. The third type of thinking is called leadership thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's another important thing. How does a leader think? So leader is all about thinking like a decision maker. So we need to understand how the leaders think. And Chanakya was training leaders. Remember that? That is very, very important because leaders think differently from followers. So if you are thinking different, you become a leader. The fourth type is called creative thinking. So many of us talk about this word called as innovation. And there is something called as creative economy nowadays. Okay. So what is the creative economy? You, you make movies, you make, uh, you know, artists have their own creative juices coming out from the mind. So can the intellect use creative way of thinking? So that's also being covered. The fourth one is creative way of thinking. The fifth is called lateral thinking. What does lateral thinking mean? Uh, it is not just alternative thinking. It's thinking out of the box and sometimes even thinking and questioning, is there a box? So one is thinking out of the box and the second is to question, is there a box? So that's a very different level of thinking and that also we have explored. And of course, the sixth dimension of thinking is spiritual thinking. Very important because spiritual thinking, if you don't have, you don't have the basis of spiritual thoughts, then my dear friends, uh, the challenge that happens is that we only think about, you know, questions and answers only from the relative standpoint. No, only what we see empirically. Jo dikta hai, wo sach hai. But bahut kuch wo sach hota hai, jo dikta nahi hai. We believe that what we see is reality. No, 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 that is not the right way of thinking. Okay, there are different methods of thinking and therefore you should have a spiritual dimension. I want to give you this particular tip, my dear friends. If you want to understand India and the Indian culture, Indian ethos, you should understand spiritual thinking. And spiritual thinking also starts with a spiritual journey that all of us go through. It is said we are not human beings with a spiritual side. Okay. We are not just human beings uh, on a spiritual journey. We are actually spiritual beings on a human journey. We are spiritual beings on a human journey rather than actually human beings on a spiritual journey. So if you look at from that standpoint, a lot of things change. Like for example, nowadays all of you must be watching the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, right? There's so many questions that people ask, debate and discuss. Like today in Ramayana, uh, we were talking, sorry, in uh, Mahabharata. It was a question of, uh, uh, you know, Eklavya and Arjun. So why did, you know, Dronacharya do this? Who was better? And why uh, Arjuna was a greater warrior than Karana? If you look at all those things, you would understand, you will not be able to solve this problem from that standpoint. 
as Einstein said, you have to go to another standpoint. There is a lot of connectivity with the spiritual part of it and the concept of Purva birth, previous births. If you want to understand India, Purva Janam, that is previous birth and the law of karma is very essential. So you have to study India's knowledge, you have to understand there are a lot of spiritual aspects of it. Until you don't understand that, you only get confused and debate and discuss without going to an end. So there is a world which exists and there are many worlds that exist parallel. Okay, don't think about that this is the only world, this is the real world. In fact, it is said this is actually Mithya. You know, this world is there, but there are many worlds. So this kind of a dimension Chanakya knew. In fact, uh, I didn't want to uh, explore that too much in detail. One of the dimensions of Chanakya is also occult practices. You know, doing and invoking uh, different deities and things like that. You know, it's very important to understand that there is a spiritual side of thinking. So make sure that you explore the sixth dimension of thinking also. So friends, uh, not much time, but what to do? This is a subject that I've spent maximum time with. Uh, of course, one of the chapters is there about the seventh chapter also. Remember that Saptanga model in a different way we have covered in this particular chapter. But there is an eighth pillar also, which we call the eighth dimension of thinking, which is covered in this. So the seven pillars is different and the eighth pillar is different. Please explore. So friends, that's for you. Inside Chanakya's mind, Anvik Shiki and the Art of Thinking. Very different book. Now we'll start thinking from how to answer your questions. Yeah, so that, that's important. Now how to start answering your questions? Because the kind of questions that has come is amazing. So friends, I'm going to start with a few questions that were left over yesterday. And of course, I'll be taking uh, new questions as well. Okay, after marriage. So he or she is married already. After marriage, my partner disagrees with me. And uh, our purpose... What is the purpose of marriage? Okay, uh, so I'm not sure what the question uh, means, but differences of opinion is always there in every particular marriage. So it is not that you know every marriage is perfect. In fact, it is too perfect. It's a problem. Uh, in India, we have this whole system of you know uh, matching the horoscopes. And in the horoscope, they say there are 36 qualities. Chhattis gun milane ki koshish karte hain, but chhattis mein chhattis gun kabi milte hi nahi hai. You know, it can never happen. So they say there are more than 20, 25 qualities that excel it. You know, go ahead and get married. Only time when 36 out of 36 qualities got matched is when Ram and Sita were, you know, their horoscopes were matched by the astrologers. But that actually showed that they will get separated. Too much of compatibility is like a North Pole and a North Pole coming together in a magnet. North Pole and South Pole attract, right? North Pole and North Pole or South Pole or South Pole. So some difference of opinion is okay. But what happens is that uh, the disagreement should not learn and in, uh, go into fights. Uh, so Swami Tejo Manji, my spiritual guru, used to say something very nicely. He said, you know, somebody asked him, you know, what do you believe in? Uh, do you believe in love marriage or do you believe in arranged marriage? He said, I believe in successful marriage. So he said, it is not love marriage or arranged marriage. I believe in successful marriage. So it's love that matters. And let me tell you, in any relationship, not only between husband and wife, between brothers and sisters, between siblings, with parents, with friends, there are times when we have difference of opinion, we have a little bit of a unburn, a little bit of a fight. So understanding is very important, compatibility is very important. And if you can't solve a problem between both of you, please involve some matured people, maybe your parents, grandparents from both sides, and discuss it out and solve it out as much as possible. There are times when probably it may not work, but that requires a different solution. But at the first level, it's important to uh, have a discussion and difference of opinion. At the, uh, at the long term is very helpful. In fact, in parenting, two different ways of thinking is very important. Swami Chirmayananji used to put it very nicely. He used to say, the discipline of a father and the love of a mother, both are important for the healthy development of a child. The discipline of a father and the discipline of a mother, both are required for the healthy development of a child. So there are different ways of thinking, but the mother will be more emotional, compassionate. The father will be more a strict person. But both are different and they are required for the healthy development of the child. Okay. So I have got a question from Abhishek. Thank you, Abhishek, for this particular question. It says, anything about share market that Chanakya has told? Um, so I don't think share market actually existed during that particular time. So the answer is no. But I can definitely tell you one thing that uh, share market is about investments. Some people expect returns and all those things. Uh, so I would suggest that, you know, when you go to anything which is new, 
which is unknown to you please take an advisor and the best advisor of that particular uh, industry and that particular field don't ask a history question to a mathematics teacher and if, just because he or she doesn't answer it you say they isko pata nahi he doesn't know or she doesn't know. i don't know so if you want to ask about chanakya i can answer it if you ask about share market i can only guide you that take the best successful share market broker investor whoever you find remember the word successful huh? i don't want just to get you into people who just look at trading as share market share market is also a science it's a very very scientific thing i know so many people in the share market they are amazing wealth creators i respect them a lot so if you want to know about it choose the right advisor and please understand even share market has got a golden rule it's not about quick money it's not just gambling okay it's called as capital markets they said it's it's about raising capital for great projects for great companies and there is a lot of mechanisms that the government puts there are a lot of regulations around it so it's a very organized sector and we need to understand it with a lot of respect and even if you want to make money wealth creation is possible that but you should have a long term approach zindagi mein kuch bhi karna hai to dur dur drishti rakho have a long term vision and a long term approach i want chanakya niti how can i get it okay so that's a book of mine my latest book is called chanakya niti uh, you can actually go to google and type uh, chanakya niti by radha krishnan pillai available in all formats uh, the physical format amazon flipkart any of those regular online sales or it's also available on kindle because now because of the lockdown the logistics may be a problem but you can try out uh, uh, getting this book interestingly we are going to cover this particular book chanakya niti in one of these sessions eighth book uh, today is anvikshiki but the next few books you will see that so chanakya niti is also there and there are many versions of it okay it's not only mine many people have written it. so if you want to know my version say chanakya niti c h a n a k y a niti n e e t i radha krishnan pillai like you will get all the details on the internet just google it okay i just uh, uh, will take up a couple of more questions so we have a question coming from mayank choudhary mayank says do businessmen think only of money all the time okay do businessmen think about money all the time the answer is yes and you'll be surprised now when i say yes they have to think about money all the time because business community is supposed to be wealth creators that's your responsibility right so but there is a difference let me tell you now money minded and money conscious there are two different things okay being money minded and being money conscious is two different things uh, so when you say money minded person he only thinks about money in a very selfish way it's all about i me myself business is all about profits and if profits are not made we need to shut down the business okay so that's being money minded and always focused on profits and you know what is my benefit of it but a money conscious person is aware of money but he's also very practical at the same time he's got a large heart because every particular project that you do you have to make it a financial success that's the dharma and the duty of a businessman you cannot just keep putting money again and again into a loss making project you better draw a line and saying that's a charity okay so one of my business uh, mentors told me something very nice no business in charity and no charity in business no business in charity and no charity in business so if you look at this is a very fine line so in that when i'm doing business that's not charity for me but when i give charity i don't look at a business opportunity it's a very thin line and look at you know successful businessmen they know how to balance it they are wealth creators and wealth distributors okay so they are many conscious so let me give a very uh, example of let's say the tata group of companies don't do, don't you think they uh, make money and they make huge money and they should make huge money to pay their employees to their shareholders to their vendors to the stakeholders the investors i think it's all important but also they know And if a project is not doing very well, they will shut down the plant. So that's being money conscious. You can't drain money. And the prime example and one of the greatest examples of leadership in the Tata Group has been Ratan Tata. He created the Nano, one of the finest models that we know in the automobile sector, one of the most economical cars in the world. But you know what? Over a period of time, they realize it's not going to be financially viable. The dream project. the chairman at that particular time ratan tata had decided you got to put more money more money more money and then you know, kept it going but he knew no it is not financially viable so the same person who started it also shut down the company more from a financial standpoint in fact the chief designer of nano car is a very dear friend of mine nikhil jadhav he was telling me how passionate 
was Radhan Tata with the project. But sometimes you have to take a business call and say, it doesn't make monetary sense, let's shut down. But that doesn't mean he's a bad person. I mean, if you look at the current coronavirus situation, the same Ratan Tata and the whole Tata group is spending 1,500 crores in research and for the contribution to the nation and especially for all the requirements of funds for coronavirus. So businessmen do think about money, but they are not selfish. It's a very important thing to do. So friends, uh, I will just uh, take up these questions today. There are so many. We'll keep doing this because we've got many more things to go. Okay, friends, so let us uh, look at the quiz. Which were the three questions that I asked yesterday? All of you must be aware of it. But interestingly, we will be asking you three new questions. We were flooded with the answers. Let me repeat yesterday's three questions. And you need to get all of them right now. So here is a chance. So all the answers that we got for yesterday were almost correct. I'm not saying all of you are correct, but almost correct. That's a huge percentage. Lots of numbers. We have tracked every single answer and comment with your names. So we have a list being maintained at our back end with all my team members. But the three questions of yesterday were, if you remember, what are the three names of Chanakya? What are the three names of Chanakya? Then the second one, which is the university in which Chanakya studied? Which is the university in which Chanakya studied? And the third one was, what are the two books written by Chanakya? I'm sure all of you must have actually read the books of mine or may have, be aware of this particular answer. But today's three questions are going to be totally different. So ready for these three questions? You can note it down if you want. But interestingly, they are also equally simple. And you can also understand this. And uh, if you have actually heard all the eight uh, sessions, eight books that we are talking about, the answers will be very easy. So the first question for today is, which is the first book of Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillai? OK, so which is the first book? Very simple answer, and we took it as the first session. For those people who missed it, you can go back and check, which is the first book of Radha Krishna Pillai. Now, the second book of Radha Krishna Pillai. Okay, so I am not going to tell you that that is the uh, question. We know the second book of Radha Krishna Pillai is Chanakya's Seven Secrets of Leadership. And you remember who is the co-author? D. Sivanandan. You know the name, answer everything. But the second question is that in my second book, that is Chanakya's Seven Secrets of Leadership, of leadership co-authored with D. Sivanandan, sir, what are the seven secrets or the seven pillars that I have mentioned? You need to tell that seven things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had explained that in detail. It is already there in the book. So you need to tell what are the seven pillars of leadership or the seven secrets of leadership given in the second book. And the third one is, which is the book? which is meant directly for students and teachers, which I wrote. In fact, I'm going to give you a quick tip. You know, what is a tip? The tip is basically what is the book that I covered yesterday? It's a very, very close answer for all those people who were there yesterday. You can just go back. So all this is based on all the books and the sessions that we have been doing. So I'll repeat that. The first question is, which is the first book of Radha Krishnan Pillai? The second question is that in my book, the second book, Chanakya, Seven Secrets of Leadership, co-authored with D. Sivanandan. Please tell us the seven secrets of leadership, all the seven pillars of a kingdom. And the third one is, which is the name of the book for students, written by Radha Krishna Pillai, students and teachers. So please send us the answers like yesterday. And if you don't find the answer, just go and watch the previous sessions, and we'll be able to connect. So friends, uh, these are the kind of uh, things that we continuously keep doing. And uh, we are always encouraged uh, to get a lot of answers from your side also. Uh, but I just want to tell you, friends, that uh, this session has been quite encouraging for all of us. And I'm sure it's encouraging for all of you also. Uh, so I would suggest that please uh, uh, come and uh, join us in tomorrow's session also. We have already announced which are the number of books that we are going to take every day.